What is going on? It is March 26. Welcome to another Beyond Plug and Play video. My name is Logic Motion, and we have a bunch of extraordinary gaming news today. So let's go ahead and get into it. First story of the day is Dragon Ball Sparking Zero reportedly won't include a split screen mode. One of the staples of the Budokai Tenkaichi series seemingly won't be returning in Sparking Zero, which is really unfortunate because if you played the Budokai Tenkaichi games like that was like one of the coolest things. Not only could you do split screen, but it had like a tag in function. So like, let's say you're playing uh, with your friend and you guys were, you guys could team up against the AI or the CPU. It was really cool. It's a cool feature that, uh, you know, not only can you like fight each other split screen, but you can also team up with each other and play against the computer or, you know, another set of friends. And I don't know, man, I just think it's unfortunate. Uh, I don't know how tough it would be to add a split screen mode versus an online mode because you know it's gonna have an online. When there's an online fighting game, you know, I feel like there's more to worry about. And I'm not saying I don't want an online, but like, I, I want both. I want the split screen, I want the online, uh, I want it all, uh, you know? Give us everything we had in those previous games and more. When it comes to the online, I feel like that's tougher than adding a split screen option in. But, you know, I don't know much about developing, so I, you know, I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it isn't. It's unfortunate to hear. The game's still going to be good from what I've seen. Uh, but, you know, that, that sucks to hear. So let's get into this next story. PlayStation Portal sales continue to impress despite skepticism. The PlayStation Portal was the best selling accessory of February. PlayStation Portal selling well is really weird just because it's so different from what we're used to. If you had the PSP, the original PSP, if you had the PS Vita, it's, it's just so different from that. But I think a reason why it's so popular is just because being like, you're not always gonna be able to kind of sit down and like use your TV or, you know, monitor or whatever you play from. Um, maybe like you have kids and the kids are watching something on TV or playing something else. And, you know, maybe you have a wife, she's doing something on the TV, but I feel like the portal being able to stream whatever you're playing on that PS five to the portal and it being on your home infrastructure, network infrastructure, it's a really cool idea. And people like it being able to play from your bed being able to like, just hop up on the couch and play. Maybe you're outside, you just watch it, you know, like having that portability is huge. And like handhelds are so popular as late. Look at the Nintendo Switch, look at the Steam Deck, like look at all these handhelds that are selling well, the Lenovo Legion Go, I think MSI Claw just came out. There's so many handhelds that are coming out. They're selling well, they're doing well, being able to move around, play from here. Hey, you, you might be in the bathroom playing with it. Like there's just so many, layers of options that you can use the handheld for. And so I think that's why the portal is selling well. Yes, you can really only stream games from it, but it's still such a cool feature, uh, just being able to do that from your PS5. Like it's solely for that. And like I said, I don't think this is an evolution of the PS Vita or the PSP, but I do think the PS portal has earned its right as its own thing, uh, being the best selling accessory of February. And it might fall off, not many people might not use it, but I think being able to play your games in a handheld function while keeping that same performance, if your network infrastructure is good, is what people want. They want a handheld device that can play their PS5 games just like the PS5. Okay, so next story, Xbox has reached an agreement with Crash Bandicoot Spiral Devs Toys for Bob for their new game. So just like the title say, if you don't know who Toys for Bob are, they are the studio that created Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, Skylanders, all that good stuff. The reason why this is so important is because during that whole Activision deal, Toys for Bob, the studio was under that. So basically Microsoft bought Activision and included in that deal was Toys for Bob. So there was an agreement reached that basically Toys for Bob is gonna go independent. They're not gonna be under Microsoft. They're not gonna be under uh, Activision. They're gonna be their own independent studio. So I'm actually okay with this decision of Toys for Bob going independent. I don't think every studio needs to be under Sony, needs to be under Microsoft or anything. Sometimes it's okay to just have that independent studio. And it's gotta be especially scary for these studios because 
you got to think you're seeing all these layoffs go on in the in the gaming industry under like Microsoft and under Sony. You probably don't want to be under that umbrella. Right. So, you know, if if it's if your demise is going to happen, it's going to be because of you, not because Sony's like, hey, it's not going good here. We're just going to take everybody away. So I'm OK with this. We get to keep getting games like Spyro, keep getting games like Crash Bandicoot. So them going independent is good because it puts them under like, OK, if something goes wrong, it's on us. It's not because Sony's not doing well and they just need to cut the skin or cut the fat or uh, Xbox. Same deal. So um, I'm okay with this. I think more companies need to go independent just because being under that umbrella of Sony and Microsoft is scary because you never know what's going to happen. And one of the bigger stories from today, as official Xbox handheld rumors swirl, Phil Spencer reveals what he wants from it. So Spencer says that the Xbox hardware team is considering different hardware form factors and things that they could go do. What should we build that will find new players? that will allow people to play at times when they couldn't go play in the past. So I think an Xbox handheld is a great idea. You're completely getting slammed in the console market and people are looking for handhelds right now. Look at the success of the Nintendo uh, Switch. Look at the success of the Steam Deck. Look at the success of the, Ace, the Asus uh, ROG Rogue Ally. Look at the success of the Lenovo Legion Go. All these handhelds are succeeding in what they're doing uh, even the playstation portal is a success uh, it's selling out you literally can't buy it anywhere right now at least uh, where i'm at it's sold out uh, target walmart whatever uh, you really can't find it in store um, so people want these handhelds they want to be able to play games in different spots or you know just wherever just being able to play a handheld in bed and have that similar or same performance as the console. That's a huge benefit. I think if Xbox is able to make a handheld and, you know, make it have good performance, run most games at 60 or native to what the Xbox can run it to and also keep a slim form factor, uh, I think it would I think it would sell uh, even if people aren't interested in the Xbox console itself. But just having uh, the power to play most games uh just as good as the xbox i think that would pull a lot of people in i think if uh, xbox releases a handheld i think it'll sell well i think that's what people are looking for right now they want handhelds uh something that's easy to navigate you could just pull it out in bed have like a uh small form factor uh all those things are great don't say that's what she said i'll punch you but uh yeah i think that's what people are looking for i think handhelds are doing really good right now they're slamming the market. And uh, if Xbox wants to put a foot back in the gaming market, I think a handheld is a really good idea. But uh, yeah, that's all the gaming news I have for today. Thank you for watching Beyond Plug and Play today. It is very awesome. If you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. I'm going to try to do gaming news every day. Uh, there are some things I'm working on in the background. Like I want to try to do like background videos. Uh, where it's not just me, just with my face here all the time, which is fine. I'm okay with that, but I just want to have some stuff like readied up. So like on the weekends, I might work on that. Uh, but like I said, if you have any ideas, anything, throw them out there. I'm, I'm open. I'm learning, learning the system together. Uh, also, this video is going to be a little messed up just because I don't know what happened with my camera at the beginning. Uh, I, I heard like the, the windows ding. It was like, doo -doo, like something disconnected. And I wasn't paying attention because I just, you know, I'm just, I'm free flowing. Free flowing, baby. And uh, <laughs> my camera just, I guess it disconnected itself. And so I'm just sitting there like. <laughs> so uh, I'm just, I'll throw up some gameplay or something. But uh, like I said, like the video if you liked it. Thumbs up if you thought it sucked. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you guys for watching. Later.